Hello guys, so today I'm going to show you a part that I'm going to print on my own 3D printer. It is a rigid wrench designed for NASA for the space station commander Barry Wilmore aka Butch and yeah he needed a wrench so NASA uh, emailed him one and yeah that's one of the big advantages on uh, having a printer on board is that first of all you don't really need the space or the room to store all those parts and tools and second and more importantly is that when you need a custom part that you um, or that they don't have at the moment on the space station they just would report that to NASA and they would send them the, the file and so they could just print them out and yeah so it's a really good uh, good way to manufacture parts and tools on the space station itself so so yeah you can download the STL file I will put a link in the description so here we have it. We're going to print it in ABS, uh, like on the st on the space station. Their printer is only capable of printing in ABS, but in this case, when using this as a tool, like it is designed for, it will be better than PLA uh, for this design because <coughs> inside, I will show you right now. So inside there is a little gear and a little notch to prevent the gear from um, spinning in the wrong direction. So when you do this in PLA, it would probably slide past the... Well, it, if it turns in that way, it will probably slide past the little notch. And with ABS, um, <coughs> ABS has p uh, better mechanical properties, so it would probably don't um, um, don't happen as mu as much as with PLA. <coughs> so yeah, as we can see, we've got some few parts in the design itself. Um, we've got the gear, and we've got this little yeah notch I call it. So it prevents, like I said, from um, turning in the wrong direction. And this piece of the notch is, uh, or acts as a spring to keep the notch in place. So you can only this is this is a pretty important thing to know if you <coughs> use this this tool is that you can only tighten up nuts or bolts or whatever. So you don't have a little switch to switch between the two modes to loosen. And tighten so if only you can tighten up things so we're also going to print this in one part so we have to make sure that there's a little gap between the parts that we're going to print otherwise it would be printed as one part in some way it does but um, the infill would be or would not be strong enough to sustain the forces when we give it a little um, spin at the end so it would break off and the parts would come loose so that's the whole thing I'm on uh, printing a full assembled design um, there will be a little infill but it's just there to keep the parts on place during the print so you don't have a failure and when it's printed it would be weak enough to yeah break loose easily so you could um, get the parts moving okay so let's get to the slicing okay so as the slicer program or software I'm going to use slicer you can probably use this with any other uh, slicer software like Cura or um, 
stukje slicer. Um, so yeah, as the um, layer height, I'm going to use 0.2 millimeters. For the infill, I'm going to use 25% density infill. Probably, if you use, if you are going to use this as a tool, like it is designed for, I would recommend at least taking 80. Uh, 80 to 90 percent infill density. In my in my case, it's only going to um, be used as a show, um, yeah, showcase. So I'm going to use then in my case 25 percent to yeah, because it doesn't really need any uh, mechanical properties. So. For the uh, brims, if you don't know what a brim is or rafts, like here, I'm not going to use any raft layers, only brim layers. I've got a nice virtual presentation of the three methods of support structures, actually, beside the skirt. So, um, all these three, or oh, uh, besides skirt, all these two, um, how should I call it, functions are used to prevent warping or re reduce warping. So that's something that we have to keep in mind because we're going to print this in ABS. And if um, you don't have for example a heated bed <clears throat> then you should definitely at least program raft or brim so what raft does is it will generate a few bottom layers and the thing is that between the part itself and the raft there will be a little gap so the gap will be filled in with support structure it reduces the shrinking because it will probably act as one part so the warping would start at the raft side or edge and not at the part edge so the skirt is not really a method to prevent warping but um, it uses some other, other um, advantages so it uh, is good for first of all to let the filament get out of the extruder properly so uh, any dirt or um, other color from a other filament would be first removed from the extruder so um, and also it would it will um, outline the parts contour so you get a real uh, immediately a thought on how big the print will be. The brim is also that I'm going to use a method for reducing warping. So instead of raft there will not be any gap or support material used with this method. So the only thing that you have to keep in mind is that you take your width of the brim big enough so that the warping would start way more from the part of so um, that there will no or will um, less chance to um, be warping at the part edge itself. Okay, so like I said, um, in my print settings, I'm going to use brim. I'm going to use a width of um, 10 millimeters. Um, I'm not going to use any support structures, so um, for that, that's good. So those are the print settings. I'm going to use a 1.75 millimeter ABS diameter, so yeah, it gives a little bit more accurately uh, prints than if you use if you would use a three millimeter wire. 
thickness. So the nozzle diameter is 0.5 millimeters and probably that's it so I will save this and we'll slice it. Also you have to keep in mind that when you always print a part that you position it correctly on the on the bed because when you would turn it 180 degrees you would definitely need a support structure so but in this case it's pretty easy to position it so um, we're going to use 20.9 cubic centimeters on filament and the print is going to take about uh, 2 hours and 45, 47 minutes so when we take a look at the layers we see the honeycomb structure with a 25% density infill like I said if you use this as a tool you would probably increase it for a better structure support and improve the mechanical properties of course I'm pretty uh, curious about how it's going to print the gear well okay so um, in my case I'm using a heated bed and in combination with Kapton tape it's also a good method for reducing um, the chances on warping and in combination with the brims that would probably give a good um, It would provide a good support or a, a good resistance resistance for the warping. So, okay. Uh, in a next video, I'm going to explain how to make uh, ABS juice. It's a other method besides Captain tape or having a heated bed. It is probably the best way to prevent warping uh, for ABS. And yeah, we'll make a video about that soon so uh, stay tuned so okay let's go to the printer so the print has just finished and first thing I noticed is that there is a um, little bit of warping at the back of the part um, maybe I can touch it with a screwdriver so as you can see, it is uh, have loosened from the from the build plate, but that's okay. So that's the the function of the brim, so that it wraps, uh, so that it warps at the edge of the of the brim, not of the part. So um, so yeah, overall quality looks pretty smooth so yeah I'm, uh, I'm really happy about that maybe there was a little bit of you know a few gaps at the surface I'm not sure if you can see it but yeah overall good quality 0.2 millimeters pretty rough so I could have that but then uh, it would be twice much print time so okay so uh, let's take it off so yeah just like on the barbecue uh, it's pretty hard when doing this with one hand voila Okay, so 